Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you Internet Explorer 8. I went to Microsoft.com and downloaded the beta 2. I'm going to review it briefly against Firefox 3. So I went to Microsoft.com and downloaded the beta 2 for my 64-bit operating system. If you have Windows XP, you can download it from there as well, of course, and then run the setup. So I'm going to go briefly through the screens here and show you what happens when you install Internet Explorer 8. Just um, be aware that when you install it, it's going to replace Internet Explorer 7. After you're done installing it, of course, you're going to have to reboot your computer. And I'll um, quickly do that right now. So let's go through the screens here and go through the license agreement and the terms and conditions and accept it, of course, after you read all that. And then next, we'll go through the screens and customize what we want. Now, obviously, we want to get the latest updates, so I'll uh, leave that checked, right? We don't want uh, to be uh, behind, so we'll leave that enabled. And uh, wait for it to download all the options. Once it's done, it's going to say you need to restart your computer, of course, and we'll just accept that and click on the Restart Now option. So once you restart it, you'll get the Internet Explorer 8 icon on your desktop, you launch it, and then it's going to start asking you, you know, do you want to um, accept certain defaults or customize things? And of course, I don't like to accept all the defaults. I'm going to customize, right? So I don't use the express settings. I use the custom settings. Now, when I mean custom, I mean, for example, um, IE8 uses the uh, live search by Microsoft as the search provider. I like using Google. So I won't use the live search. I'll say, show me a web page after where, where I can select the Google, for example, as my search. Okay, so then I'll do that. Um, now, IE8 has these accelerator providers. They're just shortcuts to online tools. Okay, so that's what that means. And again, I'm going to choose what I want, not let it select. Now, smart screen filter, I would recommend that you leave that turned on, right? Because that's going to do some protection here against some uh, uh, naughty sites and uh, um, content. So we'll just uh, enable that. And of course, do we want to make it our default browser? Well, I'm not quite sure yet, right? So I'm going to say no to that because I'm using Firefox 3. I'm happy with that yet. Maybe later I'll switch it over to IE8. And I won't import anything yet until I feel comfortable about it. So then I'll click on Finish. And by default, it has, okay, open up in Internet Explorer 8, and it's asking me to choose what search provider I wanted to use. And I said I wanted to use Google, so I click on that. And then it asks me to add that search provider. So then I'll just click on Add Provider here and make that my default. And that's the search that appears on the top right corner of your browser, right? So here's uh, IE8. So from a top view here, here's the whole browser open quickly. So you can see there's uh, some bookmark links that they give you by default, which I can remove. Um, if I switch over quickly to Firefox, there's not much difference here except for maybe right off the bat you you might notice that there's more icons on the top left corner and on the right side of Firefox there are no uh, menu items to accessing any preferences or additional features the menu items are on the top um, left corner in Firefox in IE8 you can enable the menu items to show also on the top left but by default they don't appear by default, you get these alternative menu items, which are for different types of features, which I'm going to review in a moment. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's similar to the Google Chrome, right? Google Chrome and other browsers have these menu options on the right-hand side instead. So here's a close-up look of IE8 now. It's got the smart search, right? So that's no different from Firefox 3, for example, and the Google Chrome, right? So that's good. IE8 has advanced there. They've got a decent... Um, uh, browsing uh, URL structure there so and and if I go to youtube.com like I just did for the first time here it loaded really fast that it wasn't cached in memory or nothing so it loaded really fast so I was pleased to see that and of course it comes with some default links and I just delete those the tabs you just click on that and it opens up a new tab or you can press control T so the tab behavior I'm going to switch back to Firefox here the tab behavior of IE8 it's very similar to the to the Firefox and other browser tabs. You know, just press Control T, up comes a browser, or you can right click on the tab, and you get the menu item to add new tabs and do stuff with the tabs. So IE8 has that too, right? So it's the same thing. 
um, and very very familiar inter interface, right? So that was that was good to see, right? So you can control that. One thing that IE8 has that um, Firefox doesn't have is this group tabs. So if I right click on a tab and add a new tab, it groups them. That means that that tab came from that previous tab, so they're both green, right? So that way you can kind of group them together. So that was good. Again, the icons in IE8, there's only two here, forward and backwards, but we got a quick tab. So if I click on quick tabs, it gives me these thumbnail views of what is currently open in all the tabs. Because sometimes you have like 10, 15 tabs open, and you lose track of what is going on, so you can just quickly view them all at once. It's got the bookmarks here on the left hand side of the browser, unlike the Google Chrome, for example, that has the uh, bookmarks on the right hand side, right? But um, like I said, you can you can enable certain things, certain menu options, and things like that, but no icons. You can just get those two appearing here on the top. Okay. If you want to get add-ons, right now I went to ieaddons.com, which is the uh, supported site for adding the uh, additional um, search providers and tools and extensions. There's not really much yet up there, but for example, if I wanted to add a new search provider in here. Right, I go to the IE add-ons and there's Yahoo for example. Right? There's more than just Yahoo, you can go down the list and see what else there is you know, that you might want to add. But if I wanted to add Yahoo, then obviously I'd click on inst install the, the search for the Yahoo and then click that provider. And now when I add that provider, it will put it on the top right corner there as an option. So now I can search and then choose Yahoo if I wanted instead of my default which is Google. Okay, so that's nice, easy, quick, right? Very intuitive to do and use. I had no problems with that. Um, though the toolbars and extensions, uh, right now, like I said, there's not much available there. I mean, uh, it's up to you. You can go through it and see if you like anything. I didn't find any anything that I wanted to use necessarily under these uh, additional um, accelerators, for example, that they had. I, I didn't have any use to find people on Facebook and stuff like that. So I just left all of that alone. Uh, I didn't want to add Yahoo Maps, for example, use Google Maps. So stuff like that. I mean, you can go to IE add-ons and check it out later. But um, as you can see here, I added the, um, the menu, which was not enabled by default. So the file edit view, all of these things, you just right click and then there's the menu bar. You just unclick it, uncheck it, and you can put it back if you want. Okay, so that's the menu bar which Firefox had and here it didn't. You can right click and customize what appears on this toolbar, of course, on, at the top. So right now, by default, the home button appears on the right hand side, the feeds, the read mail, all of that, and you can add more to it. So, what I mean on the right hand side, I mean over here on the right hand side. So, the home button's here instead. Of course, my PCWizKidsTechTalk.com blog is my home page and the RSS feed. So when you go to a page that has an RSS feed, it, it becomes orange, that icon, and you can actually subscribe to, to that page's default RSS feed uh, by doing that, by clicking on that icon instead of clicking on the RSS feed of the actual page itself. So it also has a read mail, which is using the Microsoft Live Mail. You can configure that to access your Gmail if you want, things like that. Uh, it has a print button and the page. Let's go through the page. When you click on the page menu, it has links to a couple of accelerators, which are links to online tools, like I mentioned. You can edit the page quickly and get the, the, the source code for it. You can run it in compatibility mode. So if you're looking at a page that doesn't look right in IE8, you can switch over to compatibility mode. It might look better. Um, under safety, you've got the in private browsing. So that one's going to hide who you are. It won't um, send information uh, and, and set cookie information. It won't cache where you've been. So this is the in private option, which is also available in the, um, in the Google Chrome, but not in Firefox at the moment. So Firefox 3, I, I heard that they're working on adding the same feature, but right now they don't. So IE8 has that. So that in private is the same as the uh, incognito feature uh, to hide and, um, and surf anonymously basically on the internet. Under the tools on the right hand side here, you've got the pop-up blocker, you can manage the add-ons, you can work offline. So all of these are standard features. We've seen those before, but I like the developer tools, right? If you launch developer tools, you're going to be able to access much more information about a page. So if you're a web developer and you want to do some testing on a page, see some code, 
um, see how it's organized by by components and chunks. Uh, you can go through that and uh, and easily see all the tags. Easily see what you are editing and uh, and test it basically, right? So um, this is this is a very nice feature to be able to to single out and access certain portions of a page quickly, right? You can use that for debugging purposes and things like that. So this was very nice um, of uh, Microsoft to add for developers, right? We always need to test and compare uh, backwards compa compatibility with other um, with your website or web pages that you're working on. Now, when it comes to memory usage, um, I went into the Microsoft Vista performance tools to check on the memory usage for Internet Explorer 7 and compared it to Firefox. So I had the same amount of browser. Uh, options basically and only one page open at the time and you can see here that the private um, uh, amount of memory allocated for Firefox is 42 megabytes and IE is using 51 so 42 against 51 you can tell that IE is using much more RAM than uh, much more memory than uh, than Firefox okay so keep that in mind all right so whether you're using Firefox or IE Google Chrome, Safari, or any other browser, you know, the, the Firefox and IE8 are uh, memory hogs, that's for sure. So um, it's up to you. I, uh, I'm still trying it out, and um, so far, so good. So I hope you like this video, and thank you for watching.